I have a big stack here of library books that I am planning on reading like over the next week or so. That's not true. I'm planning on reading them over the next however long it takes me to read 10 books, but I thought I would just pop on, try a chapter of each one and judge them as I go. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with The Inmate by Sebastian Fitzek, Fitzek, I think. And I'm gonna read a chapter of this and then see what I think to it. So I'm just gonna put some like mood music on the PlayStation. I did a video a couple of days ago of all the library books that I've got, like a library haul. And I'm really surprised how many people have watched that and subscribed off the back of that. So if you're one of my new subscribers, thank you so much. And um, thank you for watching that video if you did. But you will know all of these books already. But if you don't, I'll kind of do a quick intro of them before I read the chapter. So this one was starting with The Inmate. This one I only literally picked it up because it was recommended by Chris Carter, who's one of my favourite authors. And he writes absolutely unhinged crime, like really, really good crime, really grisly murders, really well plotted um, novels. And they are just great. So... I'm going to read the first chapter of this and let you know what I think. Off we go. Wow, okay. So obviously that was quite a short first chapter. It's only six pages long. This book is about a child killer who, I think the blurb on the back is basically that he gets caught, he admits to two murders, but he won't admit to the third one. There's a missing child and he won't admit to that. So the father of that child gets to basically go and see him in prison, like gets to go into prison to be in prison with him and kind of confront him. So that was a really interesting first chapter. We found um, the mother of one of the children that had been killed has gone down to this cellar with someone who she thinks is a policeman to um, look for her daughter. But when she gets down there and finds the body of the daughter, not the policeman, it's a murderer and she he kills her too. So that's it was quite graphic, but that, you know, I quite like that in a book. I don't mind a graphic. Not so much children usually, but I don't mind a graphic opener. Very gripping, has definitely got me wanting to read more of that. So that's probably fairly high up on my list, I would say. But we'll see what else we get because I've got all the rest of them. So the next book that I'm going to try the first chapter of is Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is the sequel to the first book called Children of Time, which I really enjoyed. I'm a bit worried. I feel like this one's got quite long chapters, so I might be, oh no, 10 pages. So I should be able to get through this quite quickly. It was honestly so long ago that I read Children of Time. I honestly can't remember. Well, I can remember the end because it had a really good twisty ending, but I don't remember a huge amount about it. So I'm going to read the first 10 pages of this and see where it sits on my stack. Obviously at the moment there's only this, so it's at the top of the pile. I don't really have another place to put a pile that's inside, apart from here where I'm going to lean. So I'll just pop it down there for the moment. Right then, so Children of Ruin, let's do the first chapter of this one. Okay, Children of Ruin. This one seems to be following a different ship on a different mission, going to a different area of space, but with the same intention of making a planet habitable for humans. And the planet that they've just got to within this first chapter is already occupied. There's already life on the planet. So that is this one. It was a very good opener. I have also got this book on audiobook from Audible. I use one of my credits because it's a it's a big boy. So I don't know if I'll pick this to continue for this weekend, but it's definitely piqued my interest in that. 
I'm sorry. Am I not paying any attention to you? You're telling me off. The next book that I have to try the first chapter of is Salt Lake by Lulu Alice Allison. Alison. Uh, the first chapter of this book. Oh, uh, okay. So there's an intro, which I'll not include. Depends how long the first chapter is. We are looking at 10 pages again. Very popular length for the first chapter. I'm going to sit and read the first chapter of this. I'm going to put my music back on. As I say, I've got 10 pages to get through. Honestly, this one I'm not too sure about. I don't really know if this one is going to be for me. I picked it up because it was on the Women's Prize uh, long list. I don't know if it, I don't think it made the short list a couple of years ago. And I was kind of interested in reading it at that point, but it never was kind of enough to push me to go ahead and pick it up or get it in any meaningful way. Let's get some sound back on and do another chapter. sure about this one I don't think it's badly written or anything like that I think it's very well written it kind of is a little bit dystopian sounds like the water's coming in to the UK and there's been a lot of illness pandemics that kind of thing but I'm not too sure if this is really my kind of thing I'm glad I didn't buy it I'm glad I just borrowed it from the library I think it's kind of going to go to the bottom of my list but that's not to say that I won't necessarily read it at some point but I just don't think I'm probably going to read it next this weekend, we'll see, we'll see. That's kind of, like I say, bottom of my pile at the minute. I know, I'm sorry, I won't shut up, but I she hates me talking. I'm gonna go for Stitched Up Next by Shahed Youssef. Let's have a look how long this first chapter is. Okay, there's a 13 page introduction and then the first chapter, woof, page 38. So the first chapter is from page 15 to 38. So what's that, 23? So I'm probably just going to read the introduction and call that chapter one for this one. Uh, okay, so that was the introduction to Stitched Up that I've just read uh, by Dr. Shahed Youssef. This was really interesting. Um, he talks a lot about, in the introduction, about prisons in general, his own training when he was becoming a doctor, the work that he did with the homeless to begin with, and then he kind of moves on to him working in prisons talks a lot about the prison system as a whole and how that isn't really working in this country, which I think is quite interesting. I said in my haul of this video, I do like a um, little slice of life nonfiction like this, where it's just about a person doing a job and their life and the job that they do and the kind of interesting parts of that. So this is probably fairly high up my pile. So I think probably at the moment, although I've still got five, possibly five more books to read the first chapter of. Uh, Salt Lake's kind of probably at the bottom. Um, Children of Ruin, I don't know if I'm, that's quite big, I don't know if I'm quite in the mood for that. And then maybe this, and then this is probably the current situation. But next up is Bookshops and Bone Dust. Now, uh, this is actually the second book, but it's a prequel to Legends and Lattes, which I called Lattes and Legends for some reason in the video. So I'm not really sure if I can read this before reading the first book. Look at this drawing in here, it's beautiful. And on the inside page as well, gorgeous. But yeah, I don't, this is, a, because it's the second book that's out, I don't really know if I can read it before, but I'm just gonna read the prologue. That can't do any, any harm, can it? Oh no, hang on, how long's the first chapter of this? Okay, the prologue is five pages. The first chapter, oh, takes us up to 12, 11, 12 pages. So I'm going to read the prologue and the first chapter 
of bookshops and bone dust. This is not normally the kind of thing I would read. Normally if I read fantasy, it is in my ears through an audiobook. I don't generally read fantasy in a physical book I can hold in my hands. Occasionally on my Kindle, but much more so as an audiobook. So how many have I done? Four and I've got four left to go. I think I think I'm gonna skip fairy tale. I I just I'm gonna skip this for now because I think it's just too too much it's too big the chapters are too long Stephen King he just he's gonna write a story and it's gonna be too long <laughs> okay so I'm going to should I do this and then have a break let me go I'm not also although I've got um pathogenesis or pathogenesis here as well I'm not going to read the first chapter of this because I'm already on page 60 75 and I'm just kind of chipping away at this in between things it's not the kind of book I'm going to sit down and read all in one sitting in one go it's something that I'm going to read chapter here chapter there over the next month or so so skipping that one so I've got I'm halfway through I'm going to just have a quick rearrange in this room fill up my wine because uh, that's getting low sorry about that okay so here we go then with bookshops and bone dust off we go So this one, I kind of am familiar, sort of, with the storyline for Legends and Lattes. It's about a tavern in a small town and some mythical creatures, hello, <laughs> some mythical creatures that live there and it's just them living their sort of everyday lives. It's a cosy fantasy. And this apparently is Viv's story, Viv. I think is one of the main characters in Legends and Lattes. Obviously, I've not read that, like I say. But yeah, it seems pretty good. Um, it feels like the kind of fantasy that I could read with my eyes rather than by audio. Yeah, this is on my list. I'm not gonna I'm gonna put it on the top. You can't even see this pile anyway. I'm gonna put it on the top, but it's not necessarily on the top. I'll rejig that pile again in a minute. So what we have left is three thrillers, which is much more my usual cup of tea. I probably should have mixed these up a bit so that it was kind of rearranged so I'd be reading different things, but in a different order. Okay, so for the next book I'm gonna read the first chapter of is Daisy Darker. This is one that I actually have on my Kindle, but I've never read it on my Kindle and I thought perhaps getting the physical book would encourage me to read it more. So this is another one that I could probably, ooh, it's got a map, it's got a floor plan. I love that. I do feel like when I'm able to double team something with an audiobook in the way of uh, Children of Ruin or with my Kindle with this, it makes it obviously a lot quicker for me to read through it. Wow, the first chapter is six pages long. How long is chapter two? Uh, 14 pages. Okay, well, it's called the Try Chapter Challenge, not read 10 pages of a book. So I will read six pages of this book. At least this will help to bring the time down because this video is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. More wine, more books. This is so much fun. I love starting new books. One of my favourite things is starting new books. So to start eight new books in one night is like heaven. Okay, back to the music and on with the next book. intriguing the last words of that were um I do have a secret and I think it's about time I shared it so very intriguing um I have read a few Alice Feeney books before this is about a girl Daisy Darker 
who we learn in this first chapter that she has a heart defect. She's died multiple times when she was a child, but now she's 20 something, 29, something like that. And it's her grandmother's 80th birthday and a palm reader told her grandmother that she wouldn't live past 80. So they think it's her last birthday. The grandma, grandma wrote a children's book that made the lots of money, but she doesn't share it much with her family. So her and her two older sisters, Rose and Lily, and the mother, I think it's the mother's mother is the grandma, all going to a party for grandma's 80th birthday. So that's kind of the opening. It seems very interesting. Um, it's Halloween as well, so we'll see. This is pretty high up my pile. And um, let's have a little rearrange. I've got two books left to go. I'm going to put those over here, and I'm going to start putting these here in the order in which I would potentially read them. Let's get that in shot. Sorry, don't mind. This is <laughs> this is a little cat house that Memphis likes, and this is Pokey's bed next to the radiator because she likes to be hot all the time. So. This is the current order. Oh yeah, I put uh, bookshops and bone just there. And that, you know what? That's quite high for me. I think I'll put that probably here. I might move this around again at the end. I'm going to put that there. We can see the current rankings. And on this pile, Daisy Darker is probably. I'm still, to be honest, that inmate is the most interesting to me at the moment because it opened with a really good murder and Chris recommended it i know i said that at the start but chris Carter has a lot of sway with me he is a very talented man so i think this is going to go here for now i'm going to keep the inmate at the top so the next book that i'm going to read is cold blooded liar by karen rose again if you watched my library haul you will know my feelings about these books uh, i think they are slightly ridiculous very over the top spicy scenes um but as thrillers and as crime novels they are very well paced very intricate and very very readable so let's have the first chapter of this one and see how we get on with it This one, the opening is another dead child. So <laughs> we have a theme from the first one and the penultimate one. But oh, we have two children in the foster care system, one of which has been murdered. The other one is her sister, but not by blood. So they've obviously been in the foster care system together. And this was set 15 years ago. And we are following her speaking to her foster father who she's got not a difficult relationship with but she's quite self-contained and she, you know she's not really trying to connect with foster parents so they have a strained relationship from that side of things and she's saying that she is going to find the killer of Ren the little girl who's the one that died and then obviously we jump forward to 16 years later 15 years later something like that and um now it seems like she's a cop and I'm guessing that we're going to pick up this case and follow it along. The part that I read was just like a flashback so there was no love interest at that point but I'm certain there's going to be one because that is what these books generally are. I've read three or four of Karen Rose's books now and they've all been very much romance thrillers so yes I will be very interested to read the rest of this. Where is it on my stack? Probably, I feel like this is the kind of book that I'll not read immediately, but I'll kind of probably read it in one sitting. These tend to be quite long uh, books. Uh, this is quite short for a Karen Rose book. They're normally kind of like five, 500 plus pages. And this one's 392, so just under 400. I think I'm gonna pop this. Hmm, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm tempted to say under stitched up, under the prison doctor book, but equally I feel like 
when I've got a day off, I might just randomly pick that up and absolutely smash it out in a day. So who knows? So then we come to the last book that I'm going to read tonight for this try chapter tag, which is End of Story by AJ Finn. I don't really know anything about this one, apart from it's from the same author that wrote The Woman in the Window, which is a difficult one because I really enjoyed that book. And was there a film? I can't remember if there was a film, but I did really, really enjoy the book when I read it. It was just a very compulsive thriller to read at the time. There was a lot of bad press about that author, which I'm fully like, not backing the author at all in any way because I think he like lied about having cancer or I don't know I just very briefly googled it after I posted my library haul but I've already got it now and to be honest I do really want to read this I hate myself for it but I do really want to read it so I'm probably going to read the first chapter because that's the point of this whole video and these are short chapters okay so there's a page and then a, uh, oh, okay, yeah, 10 page chapter, but there's like two blank pages in between. So this is gonna be my last one. Let's see, where we are, where are we, where are we? Let's go for it. Okay, Hang on. <laughs> this does seem quite good. It's set in San Francisco, which is a place where I've been quite a few times. My sister-in-law lives there, so we do go and visit. I don't know, I feel a bit conflicted about this because obviously the author's a terrible person, but I've already got it and I do really want to read it. Maybe if I just read it like really quickly, it'll be like it never happened. And if it's terrible, I can come on and say it's terrible. And if it's good, I'll just never mention it. And then you'll never have to know if it's good or not. And you can just pretend it never happened too. Sound fair? Don't know. Okay, so I've read everything. I'm not putting that on the top necessarily. I'm just putting it on the top for now. I'm going to have a think about which one was my favourite. But definitely really good. I've really enjoyed this. I have still got the Stephen King, but oh, I'm just going to like not read that now. And then everything else from the library. The other, this is the eight books that I are like contenders for my next read. Pathogenesis, I will just read at some point. Endgame, I already finished. And Stephen King is Stephen King. So that makes the 11. Right, so this is the pile. This is the wine. And we're gonna have a little digest for the rest of the evening. And I'm just gonna watch some bones for the rest of the night, I think, cause that's like my usual Thursday night thing. But thank you for watching, as I say, and I will catch you in another video or stream or something soon. <laughs>